I'm not sure which came first, the business interest in space or the hobby. I think they were coincident in a way. But, well, it just so happens, perhaps, that the timing has been remarkably good of late to be looking at space as an investment theme. Armed, ready to go in three, two, one. My name is Steve Jurvetson. I work at Draper Fisher Jurvetson. We are an early stage venture capital firm, and we invest in startups that are trying to change the world. And launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as NASA turns to the private sector to resupply the International Space Station. Well, I'm on the board of SpaceX, and we've invested in that company from early on. We have been investing in rocket launch capacity, putting things into orbit, and there's probably a few more investments like that that could be made. We're currently investing in low Earth orbit satellites, things that fly in orbit, moving around the Earth. It's a model, but it is a one-to-one -one scale model, meaning this is literally how small it is. That's the lens. That's all it takes. You fly this close to the Earth, you get as good a photo as those enormous, expensive satellites flying far, far away. We like the low Earth orbit satellite business because it's in a massive state of disruption. People are used to building satellites that cost a half billion dollars and the size of a Greyhound bus, and they're now being shrunk down to literally something this big. I mean, that big, that cost tens of thousands of dollars, and you put hundreds of them up, and the entire constellation costs a fraction of the old model, but provides a much better service. And that insight to have what are almost disposable satellites would have been unthinkable in the past when it costs too much to get to orbit. So as your minimum cost of entry comes down, you can rethink how you build the things that go up there. And that's what we're in the middle of doing. So we first invested in SpaceX, now we're thinking about how do we re-engineer how satellites are made. And then later it'll be tourism and exploring, you know, the frontiers of the unknown. We don't have any wires on the other side, do we? Just the quick things. No wires wrap around, do they? Okay. I've always thought that it's actually healthy to have a hobby, to get out of the mental ruts that academic disciplines and career tracks imply. Four and five, four, three, two, one. I think the kids, a hobby we could do together was the initial inspiration, working with your hands, almost like it's a form of enrichment to have the things you do every day at work and then to have a form of art or expression. And then fire's cool. Should I mention that? Uh, that uh, pyrotechnic uh, urge, I think, runs deep within my uh, genetic material. When they go well, there's a thrill of victory. When they go poorly, there's agony of defeat in the classic Olympic sense, but it's a visual spectacle. Oh! In both cases, photography and rocketry, I like the fact that I'm feeling like an artist. I'm meeting people where the conversations are a different plane. Heads up! <laughs> and it does infuse business. I mean, literally, I've invested in companies I met in the Black Rock Desert while we were launching rockets. There have been more cross-pollinations with work than I ever would have imagined going into this. The photos I take, I share a lot of this online, and it leads to all kinds of conversations. I end up learning more. I end up meeting people, frankly, who are starting businesses in related areas. And if nothing else, I create a different network of science connections and engineering connections than I would just doing the same old thing every day. There's something about the modern economy of continual lifelong learning, of moving from one industry perhaps to another, which I love to do as a venture capitalist, that seems consistent with trying to get out of your normal, in a sense, intellectual pursuits. So of all these artifacts, this one on this shelf is particularly interesting in that this has been on the moon for three days as part of Apollo 17. What I love about the things I collect is the stories attached to them. In almost no case do I think I'll collect something because it's just this thing, and I'm trying to get all the things in a series. That just doesn't motivate me. It's the, wow, this item has the following story or history attached to it. And in the Apollo space program, there are stories everywhere. All oh, these amazing stories come up about how they solved the technical problem, or you know, a mishap that almost would have been a historic mishap that was solved in some way or another, or, or the incredible advances in science and technology that had to happen within an incredibly short period of time to pull this off. You know, in every startup, you have an entrepreneur who has some dream or vision, the star that they see on the horizon. That carries you through a lot of years of hard work and more prosaic accomplishments in many cases. 
But that dream is really powerful and motivating for the whole team and for investors in companies like that. I think we, as humans, like to imagine what could be and explore what hasn't been explored, to go to the deepest depths, to go to the highest heights. And the folks who help enable that and take the steps in that direction are some of our greatest heroes. Yeah,